Hi everyone, this is Dan, and this is Star Wars number 72 by Marvel Comics, uh, written by Mary Jo Duffy, breakdowns by Ron Friends, which I think means pencils, and finishes by Tom Palmer, uh, edited by uh, Luis uh, Simonson, called Luis Jones in this one, and uh, editor-in-chief Jim Shooter. And now the last time we uh, left Lando and Luke, they were ambushed by IG-88 and Bosk, uh, they were looking for Han Solo. Instead, they found Cheeto, which was a character from two issues ago, Cotton Carbonite. And uh, things are looking bad for them until Rick Duell and Danny, two characters we were also introduced two issues ago, who are friends with Cheeto, the guy in the Carbonite, uh, show up to help them out. And we get a nice little fight that ensues. Uh, we get a funny uh, reaction by Lando to who these people are. And uh, get some Luke uh, lightsaber action going on. So uh, Luke and uh, Lando start to turn the tables on our bounty hunters till IG-88 sets off an alarm and brings in reinforcements. And uh, our heroes get overwhelmed. Uh, Danny gets captured, Lando gets captured, and only Rick and Luke survive. Uh, Rick and Luke, uh, so Luke wants to go uh, back and rescue them, but Rick uh, being uh, the cool-headed one, uh, says, hey, we got a plan. I got a plan to go save them. Follow me. And in the meantime, you get some interesting dialogue by Joe Duffy. So check this out. Uh, this time, uh, so Luke is uh, talking to Rick. This time you seem to be sincere about helping the rebellion. Why the change of heart? And then Rick says, what happened to Cheeto and Solo is part of it. The rest is simple economics. When everybody is governed by a big monolithic power structure, the free enterprise system has to break down. You cheat everybody, somebody, and wind up dead or enslaved or trapped in carbonite because your victims got friends in high places. This galaxy won't be a safe place for con men to operate until we wipe out that kind of abuse. Pretty interesting, right here. Gives you a little bit of a uh, little bit of depth to this character, Rick Duel, which I don't know if he's in the EU canon or is it just in the comics. Uh, it also gives, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, so you could take this. Uh, dialogue either way if you're looking at it politically what joe duffy's trying to say uh but i mean she writes it in such a way that honestly anyone could read this uh regardless of their politics and be kind of like oh that's intriguing that makes sense right uh kind of like it that's pretty smart dialogue uh, from a writer's perspective right uh luke calls uh, back to the millennium falcon only to find out that uh, chewie and r2d2 already left they're on their way into town uh doing some uh funny comical uh uh, <laughs> uh, sneaking <laughs> and then you get uh, uh, so they run into a Stenaxes and you know both the Stenax and Chewie both uh, don't particularly like each other right uh, Land so Danny's doing her uh, Zoltran, Zoltran or Zoltan thing where she uh, or Zeltrons I should say uh, where she kind of uh, flirts with every male organism in her uh in her vicinity uh lando does his usual thing where he tries to talk himself out of anything uh try to be the smooth talker till he finds out uh these bounty hunters are all working for treble who really wants him for scamming him or wants lando for scamming him and then uh danny decides to use her uh feminine wiles to get herself out of trouble uh, I like this dialogue, by the way. I've heard about you Zeltrons, and I don't want to go rolling with any red skin freak. <laughs> That's pretty smart uh, dialogue to kind of interject some sexual innuendo into a comic controlled by the Comics Code Authority. So pretty smart uh, writing by uh, Joe Duffy. Also, this is really interesting. So uh, in the beginning, Danny kind of uses her, her feminine wiles to get the guy uh, to drop his guard before attacking him. Like this kind of writing is not only is it interesting to see a female writer or a woman writer uh, write this way, but it's kind of taboo now in modern Marvel. Uh, now in modern Marvel, all women must be worshipped the moment they show up in a comic book. And they also must be more powerful than every other character, period. Uh, but that's kind of women in all medium now medias nowadays. Nowadays, I should say. Uh, so Lando and Danny escape. Uh you get a little bit of uh, side plot here with Chewie and uh, R2-D2 trying to sneak into the, the facility with Luke and Rick also trying to sneak into the same facility except they're, they're coming in from the roof. 
And then this is where the issue gets very confusing. And I think uh, I have to say this is probably uh, Ron Friends because this is the Marvel method. This is actually his responsibility to explain visually what's going on in the plot. So probably what Mary uh, Joe Duffy wanted was, hey, uh, uh, Chewbacca and R2-D2 fight with the Stanexes, but through uh, sort of a understanding about the power of violence or something like that, Chewie and the Stanexes see eye to eye and Chewie convinces them to, to help out uh, our heroes, right? But these panels don't really explain it too well. And so what ends up happening uh, here is that so Danny and Lando uh, make a bad turn, uh, end up where Bosk and IG-88 uh, wanted that or were waiting for them. Uh, they're about to get turned into Carbonite till Luke uh, saves them until he gets kind of surrounded with Rick being captured. And then all of a sudden some spears fly out of nowhere and stab everybody. Uh, not exactly what I think uh, the plot probably was asking to be to be explained, right? So what ends up happening here is that uh, the Stanexes show up, Chewie shows up and beats up the two bounty hunters. And then uh, you get a really cool scene where Chewie chucks a bunch of people in the Carbonite freezer. And you get a really cool like facial panel right here. This is actually, I like this a lot, right? But the explanation of it is, is not particularly good, right? So, you know, uh, she has to kind of use dialogue with... Uh, with uh, uh, Rick here to explain how all of that occurred. Uh, but yeah, that's probably the one weak point of this comic is uh, that whole turn in the plot is not uh, explained very well. Uh, but you get a happy ending and you get an interesting sort of twist. Uh, Danny decides to uh, join the crew of the Millennium Falcon because uh, she wants that Skywalker meet every night. <laughs> and uh, that's it for uh, issue 72 of Star Wars. So I actually had a good time uh, reviewing these. Uh, they were pretty good. I don't. I wouldn't say they were as good as X Men or Daredevil, but uh, uh, they were enjoyable and they were up to the quality of Marvel of this time. Uh, I don't know if I'll do the, any more of these or if I might jump over to the uh, more uh, newer Star Wars. Well, new, relatively new, uh, such as the uh, uh, the adaption of the Timothy Zahn uh, EU trilogy in the comics. I think I might do those because uh, that'll be really fun. Uh, and anyhow, uh, that's it. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. If you have any comments, uh, questions, uh, any uh, addendums to this uh, Star Wars run or this particular comic from the uh, uh, early 1980s, uh, leave them down below. And uh, I'll see you next time.